We are studying the art of Ted Harrison and his landscape pictures are our inspiration for this project. When you start this project, I find it helpful to draw some boxes on a plain sketching piece of paper, a free draw paper, and sort of plan out some ideas you might use for this project. We know that a lot of times he has a sun in his picture. It could be big, it could be small in the background. Now I might go ahead and separate my ground. It could be water, it could be land. That's up to you, that's what you're planning right now. So I might put some more layers to my ground because we looked at how he has a lot of different wavy lines in there. If this is land, I could go in and put some trees. I could put a house. But the main part of the picture is the landscape and the lines. So these things will be usually small. I might go in and make some tall lines if I want mountains in this picture. And then I might have some round lines coming from the sun. So that's an idea. I'm going to choose this bottom sketch. I like it the best because it's simple. And Ted Harrison's artwork is very simple. There's not a whole lot of details going on. So I think this is going to look the most like his artwork. So I'm going to start with my middle line. And since this is a tall picture, I'm going to turn my paper the tall way. So then I'm going to look at my sketch. I'm going to do some lines that are kind of going downward. So this is the snow in my picture. And then I'm going to have a mountain. So it's going to start way over here and come up and down. I'm going to add where it would have ice and I'm going to add a couple of lines through my mountain. I think I'm going to follow the pattern of the ice. Then I'm going to add my sun, and I'm going to change it because I like this design, but I like this sunshine, so I'm going to sort of combine them. You can also trace a cup to make a very round sun. I'm going to trace my lines with a construction paper crayon and I'm picking one color, only one color for the entire picture for all of the tracing. Except I am going to come in here and add some trees to sort of break up the ground from the mountain. So I'm going to add some of those in with a black. I'm just changing the color for the trees um, so that they'll stand out. I'm going to add my trees by making sticks and then just sort of drawing triangles on each side. For the painting, we're going to use our cake paints. You're not going to have all the colors you need for this project, so we're going to have to put some colors on really dark. We're going to have to put some colors on really light. When Ted Harrison makes his paintings, one thing about him is that he puts a flat color in each stripe. So if I put red here, I'm not going to change to green or yellow all in the same stripe. It's just going to stay red the whole way in this whole section. And it's not going to change from dark to light. It's going to stay the same red all the way across. And then I pick a new color for the next stripe. painting really slow up next to the top of my line with the very top tip part of my paintbrush. That's the best part of your paintbrush to use up next to a line. I'm 
Now one way to get a variety of colors is to add a color lightly. So I put um, my paint down and I just don't add much paint. I just mostly have water on my brush. I just swirl around the paint a little bit and I put it on my paper. If I happen to get too dark on accident, I just dip back in my water and add more water right on the page. I don't have to dip in the paint a second time. It'll make a really thin wash. It's called a wash of paint. Um, and that way I can get more colors because I only have two blues but I have three stripes. So that helps me create a new blue, a light blue.